Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, of all the royal colleges worldwide, and you probably don't realise, but there are many royal colleges, uh, I hold the psychiatrists in high regard. My psychi psychiatric history, uh, my early start as an unaccompanied child refugee uh, from Nazi Europe, led me to survivor guilt uh, and depression. Um, I had six years analysis at, under the, the Kleinian analyst, Dr. Israel, at the Tavistock Clinic, um, starting with three sessions a week, dropping to two, then one, but it, that went on for six years, and it did eventually um, get me out of those problems. And looking back, I helped by sublimating my problems in my IT entrepreneurship. The information technology, I'm classed as a late pioneer of the industry, is where all my wealth stems, and today I would describe myself as happy and fulfilled. I've done what was in me to do. And although there were periods where I was really taking tablets to keep the black dog at bay. I'm not a medic, so especially value being honored um, and about to be presented, uh, made an honorary fellow of this college. And basically for my practical experience, um, Understanding of autism with learning disability. I have only second-hand um, knowledge of autism um, with, without learning disability, and uh, that slants what I'm going to be talking about today. Some people on the autistic spectrum may indeed be of high intellect. I know a young man at Yale studying computer science. Um, there is really nothing holding them back except their autism. Um, together, the UK has some 600,000 people on the diagnosed as being on the autistic spectrum. And that means when you take into account um, family, um, carers, and immediate family, um, that is probably affects, autism directly affects some two to three thousand, two to three million people in the UK. We refer to the autistic spectrum, but since it ranges over a triad of difficulties in communication, forming relationships, and making sense of the world, it might better be termed autistic space. Of 20 children born with autism, only three will ever find full-time work. Five will never learn to speak. And 16 of the 20 will have mental health problems. Uh, for child and adolescent psychiatrists, the key patient group is autism. <coughs> autism brings into sharp focus what it means to be human. It currently has a privileged position in psychiatric research, which is shaped to the needs and the views of autistic people and their parents and carers. And the focus is on things such as fear or anxiety, rather than medical categories such as autism or epilepsy. I do expect that this audience uh, will be like teachers and parents who live vicariously, indirectly, through their charges, thinking not, he hit me, but rather, why is he upset? I'm going to punctuate this talk with details of uh, the troubled life of my, our first and hence only child Giles 
was born in 1963, so I'm talking about a whole, whole generation back. A beautiful, contented baby. I know every mother thinks that. But he was lovely and he was easy, I was lucky. Um, but at two and a half years old, like a changeling in a fairy story, he turned from that placid, loving, easy child into a, a wild, unmanageable toddler. And he lost all his speech. Not that he had much, because he was clearly learning dis disabled by that time. Um, but he lost all speech. And this, this difficult toddler um, there was, was not the terrible twos. He was eventually um, diagnosed as profoundly autistic, and he never spoke again. Autism at that time was called infantile schizophrenia and was considered a rare disorder. Uh, in Britain, such children were classed as ineducable and came under health rather than education. Not only were they subject to stigma, uh, but so were the staff who worked with them. Nowadays, it, it, it can be for staff a, you know, a good place to be. Um, and you hear of parenting that their child might have a touch of Asperger's, the high level of autism. There were several times uh, more boys and males uh, with autism than females. Uh, and it, one wonders. Is this because the girls present differently? Do they camouflage better? Is that why they're underdiagnosed? And we do not know. There are a lot of things we still do not know. And research into gender issues is badly needed. Um, why the skewed balance? Um, why do autistic women die on average? earlier than autistic men. Who will study autistic women's menopausal issues or help aut autistic mothers whose children will probably be removed unless the family steps in? What was Giles's psychiatric history? He had Monday to Friday for eight and a half months in the Park Hospital in Oxford, a diagnostic psychiatric hospital for children, with me trying to run my business from its mother's unit. They predicted that they, he would lose his other senses. Having lost speech, they predicted that he would lose balance, hearing, smell, a lot. Um, I mean, I guess that was, nowadays we define that as childhood a disintegrative disorder, but they didn't call it that, but the prognosis was still so awful um, that even after eight and a half months, uh, we asked for a second opinion uh, on that diagnosis, and we were referred to the Great Ormond Street Hospital, and they were the first ones to ever use the autism word. word. Later, he had several years weekly um, therapy with the renowned Frances Tustin, who took on to herself. Um, she was then retired. We used to do it on Saturday morning. Um, but I, I'm not quite sure what she did. I saw her um, studio clinic, whatever it was. It just looked like a children's, children's room with toys. Um, but she said she promised to try and take on to herself some of the aggression that I'd been getting. And she certainly did that. Giles hated going there, but he was, became easier with me, and we got somewhere. It's not a pretty story, really. Um, for 11 years from the age of 13, uh, Giles was in a locked ward of an old-style subnormality hospital. An anthropologist would have described him as the family sacrifice because it was him or me. But asylum means a safe place. 
we've been professionally advised that Giles had a normal uh, life expectation. But he died at age 35 uh, during his first ever nighttime seizure. Uh, and included a review of all suicides to identify those diagnosed or suspected of having autism. Despite the known differences in uh, autistic people's brain chemistry and, and, and sensory uh, worlds, they are prescribed vast quantities of drugs. Is that because they can't access talking therapies? Or because people are unwilling or unable to work with them? Or because some are non-verbal and people automatically use cognitive behavior therapies? Medication can't help the core autism. Uh, but there are certainly occasions when uh, it can help someone with autism. Although we don't even know how antidepressants work for people with autism. All in all, we know surprisingly little, considering autism's been around since the 1930s. There is a big push in Britain, apparently, to reduce medication. So perhaps psychiatrists should refer to psychologists for things such as mindfulness, which has led, certainly measured to lead to less challenging behavior from autistic clients, which use, when used, mindfulness used not with them, but with their carers. Neurotypical adults uh, often have a social uh, or generalized anxiety disorder or tics or obsessive uh, uh, compulsion disorder. But neurotypical children, many of whom do have an anxiety disorder, can have touches of all of them and thus be misdiagnosed as being autistic. And conversely, autistic children who become fixated uh, on, in the belief that they're the wrong gender, the wrong sex, can be misdiagnosed as having gender dysphoria. So how can people with a lifelong neurodevelopment disorder affecting how they communicate with and experience the world around them be helped to longer, happier, healthier lives. <coughs> data science, and I was a computer person, <coughs> data science extracting knowledge from high volume data, already used in several diseases, has great potential to better recognize and understand how genes and environmental issues interact. As can so easily happen, Giles became institutionalized in the asylum and then started to lose several of his human rights. I don't really want to go into detail on that. But eventually, against the, against the advice of the hospital consultants, my husband and I set up a private support <coughs> service. It took us six years to de-institutionalize him. And Giles became the first resident in the first home of that first charity. Yet, despite everything that two loving parents tried to do, his life was overall abysmal. Today, that charity, Autism at Kingwood, um, employs over 300 staff, uh, including a four-day-a-week uh, clinical psychologist, and it supports 143 autistic adults, 73% male. It's also contracted to keep a weekly <coughs> overview of more than 100 adults with autism 
on the autistic spectrum, the people at the Asperger level who, in the main, are able to live independently. And it has a small uh, residential um, college for just eight students uh, teaching life skills. It is a pioneer of best practice, um, leading the field on the design for living, uh, architectural and otherwise, uh, in its use of assistance dogs, in its use of technology, stress monitors, wristbands to measure neurological and, and psychiatric conditions, or determine whether someone is experiencing a fight or flight response. Giles, of course, was the inspiration behind my giving over 50 million to the autism sector, three quarters of my total charitable spend. And that's in support of some 70 autistic projects, a whole variety of them. Large or small, but each is targeted to be pioneering, never more of the same, no matter how worthy and strategic. What do I mean by that? Um, projects that, if successful, make a real difference in the sea of autistic need. Let me now select some other projects in which I think you may be interested to tell you about this. I don't know how many of you have seen the film um, Life animated. Um, there's an autistic Owen is in that who um, we see his progress and he learns to speak using Disney speak. And the phrase came out of that that I still remember. Who determines what a meaningful life is? And hence the importance of spiritual development and why I funded a whole group concerned with the spirituality of people with learning disabilities. At that time, it wasn't possible to separate out autism. Uh, but the spiritual uh, aspects, the non-material things, uh, music, art, nature, animals, friendship, love, and for some, faith. Um, autistic people with Asperger's tend to reject organized religion in favor of their own independently constructed beliefs. Because of their high incidence of mental health issues, um, you'll be used to dealing with people having the different autism and the enormously wide range has features in common. Wittgenstein talked about family resemblances. You'll also be coming across parents who may be bankrupting themselves emotionally, financially, for treatments and interventions. And you'll be coming across depressed siblings the time and emotional pressures of, on family members can be soul-destroying. In psychiatry, he used to be called the medical treatment of the soul. Perhaps family therapy is what is required. Or a family assistance doc. I was at Lincoln University recently, and they have measured in financial terms the value of such trained pets in a family environment with autism. Over the past 20 years, uh, my charitable foundation has directly or indirectly um, sponsored autism projects at 12 different universities. Let me pick out Edinburgh, it's the Wild, Patrick Wilde Centre for 
um, autism, research into autism, fragile X syndrome, and learning disabilities. My involvement started about a decade ago with a mock brain scanner. So people wanted to be able to scan brains, but really the patients, if that's not, I'm sure that's not the right word, but the individuals had to be trained to be, a, be relaxed in a mock scanner so that when they'd got through that, they could use the expensive real scanner and would get some ideas to what's going on between their ears. I find it very fulfilling to spend time in such an environment. The staff are absolutely marvellous. Um, I don't know how they cope with some of the stresses, but you can see in that film how the pupils and young people are looking to the staff for reassurance in their life. Um, I hope you get a lot from that. Um, the school's motto is to learn to be. And I think that evokes some of the aims of psychiatry. Um, the school employs a four-day-a-week psychologist, um, Dr. Tim Williams, um, since it opened in 1999. Um, and he advises the staff, and there are many of them, um, on how to tackle the, the, the numerous eating problems, uh, pupils whose diet on entry uh, literally comprises chips and tomato sauce, and they have never eat, apparently never eaten anything else. And he helps with the phobias, um, some of which can now be treated by virtual reality, by my IT skills, um, that uh, half of autistic children are phobic of dogs, um, compared to other children's 5%. So the, the phobias are very much, and they really have to be dealt with. And of course, there are many, many crises. There's a hospital visit about once a week. And Dr. Williams' work on uh, deep pressure um, appears to give immediate relief, as statistically significant, um, to most of the pupils on which it's been treated. And there are many, many citations of his paper on the effect of aromatherapy with through massage effect on sleep patterns. And parents are desperately interested in sleep patterns. Around about the millennium, I began to target medical research. And we still don't know what autism is as distinct from what it looks like. And that led inexorably to Autistica, um, founded in 2004, and now Europe's largest charitable funder of autism research. In 2013, um, Autistica did a survey of a thousand, this was in England, a um, thousand autistic individuals, parents, carers, and professionals as to what they saw as the research priority. And they came up with three clear strategies. Earlier diagnosis. Well, any parent could have told you that. Um, beware also of the cultural barriers that lead to misdiagnosis of children from immigrant communities. And similarly, symptoms of sexual abuse among children can easily be mistaken for baseline characteristics of autism. More hard data is needed. The second one was autism and ageing, because up to then, nearly all the work had been done on children. And ageing includes death, which, about which I've spoken a bit. And <coughs> the top of the list is mental health. And that's not surprising, because 79% of autistic people have mental health issues. And they rate their anxiety as the number one problem in their lives. 63% meet the criteria for anxiety disorder. And 
your understanding of compensation may help you to help them in their struggle to get into society and to manage their mental health. Anxiety in those with autism can be marked by aggressive outbursts in a way that's hardly ever seen in non-autistic people. Although we know that autism is a brain disorder with over 80% of the cause genetic, some medics in France and elsewhere um, still believe it to be psychological. Autism is genetically linked with psychotic disorders. And to counter that, Autistica started inviting bids um, to tackle anxiety, to tackle depression, ADHD, suicidal thoughts, focusing on the underrepresented groups, such as those with intellectual disability um, or autistic women. Autistic is also funding a, yeah, a major new trial to look specifically at interventions for anxiety in adults. Last year, they f hosted the first ever international um, summit on suicide uh, <coughs> to allow academics and clinicians to exchange knowledge and ex expertise and design new studies. And Professor Appleby's President's Lecture uh, last year on suicide was very relevant. And the charity is committed to study the risk factors for mental illness in autistic people so as to identify the life events leading them to poor mental health. Ever proactive, Autistica is also funding a study to explore the psychological impact of stigma on parents, indeed carers generally, and how the stigma affects their ability to care. And it's launching a program um, focused on epilepsy uh, in, for those with autism. And for, for, for reasons that I really don't understand, um, epilepsy is most commonly treated by psychiatrists rather than neurologists, perhaps. Uh, finally, Autistica recently set up a, a UK autism research network. Uh, and I, I'd encourage you to join that research network as members, perhaps with the college as a, an official partner. Let me comment on the family issues. Some therapies rely on super parents, but that does not stop us feeling guilty. Am I not fit to have a healthy child? What did I do wrong? And why me? And the relentless demands of a child uh, with autism can bring out the best in most of us, most of the time, but can also unmask our own weaknesses. It's ever our dream, or is it nightmare, that inside every child with autism is a child without autism trying to get out. A recent Canadian study that a colleague sent me um, commented on fatigue <coughs> as fatigue as a sense of exhaustion that cannot be cured by rest and affecting both mental and physical capacities. Parental research to date has um, focused on mothers of autistic children who are said to suffer as much stress as a combat soldier. Now, their fatigue levels um, came from psychological distress, whereas for fathers, it was the impact of parenting on their day-to-day -day lives. <coughs> Both parents rated 
of general health was linked to their fatigue levels. Both reported high levels of psychological distress, poor sleep patterns, also the poor sleep quality of their, their children's sleep. And parents deserve PhDs in patients. I viewed Dr. Joe Cannon's uh, lecture, uh, President's lecture, and uh, was struck by her comment that sometimes it's important for doctors to do nothing. Do nothing is also very important in software. I often find myself listening to parents, usually mothers, in crisis with their autistic child, and there's really nothing I can do but do nothing. So I listen hard and do nothing. My mission is formalized as the facilitation and support of pioneering projects with strategic impact in the field of ASD, um, with particular emphasis on medical research. Ladies and gentlemen, you will be seeking to understand how your profession can improve an autistic quality, family's quality of life. To make living easier for people affected, directly or indirectly, by autism. You can help by making sure that everyone in your department has a modicum of basic training in autism and then by recording accurate data from your patients, simple stuff, to better understand the different autism subtypes. And of course, avoiding in-group therapies for those on the spectrum. And by developing a culture of research in your clinical practices, recording what works and what doesn't, we need data to drive research. And according to the NHS's National Institute for, for Health Research, clinicians engaged in research deliver better clinical care. So let me finish as I started. I'm not a medic, um, but rather a mother focused on autism. Uh, in the United States, uh, people search for a cure for autism. And across Europe, many find that comparable to the homosexual conversion treatments of the past. But autism is who you are. The qualities that make an autistic person stand apart can make them stand, uh, can make them stand apart in positive ways. Um, so for many people, some of them, autism is no longer viewed as a disability, but rather a different way of living. It is conceitful to assume that there is such a thing as a normal brain. And the autism sector thinks in terms of difference, which has no value judgment, rather than disorder with its risk of stigma. Are autism's intense passions, non-productive obsessions, or areas of untapped potential, the breath of life? Thank you very much.